Jace Tunnel here. Look what we have washed up today. A tarpon. I don't know how many of y'all have seen these tarpon before. An amazing fish. These things can get to be, you know, up to eight feet long. And we don't see them that often. Actually, Port Aransas here used to be the name of the town, like way back when, used to be called Tarpon because they caught so many tarpon there. But, you know, we've always wondered, it's like, what happened to all those big tarpon? Did we catch too many of them? You know, probably a classic example is like, you, you get all the big fish and then all you're left with is little ones. But at the Heart Research Institute, they're actually doing a study looking at tarpon and where they're growing up because they have an interesting life cycle to where you know they can live out in the open ocean and then also go up into the freshwater areas. And so um, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about this, then we're gonna go to the Heart Research Institute so we can talk to them about where they're looking because I think you would be surprised at where they're looking for these tarpon and it's probably right in your own backyard, literally. So I, was, I put some gloves on here. It's um, because it's not, it's looking like maybe sharks ate it. Uh, when I pulled up here, there was actually some birds that were feeding on it. But some of the interesting things that you'll know, notice here is whenever you come up on a big tarpon like this, is that uh, the scales, the scales on this thing are huge. And I'm gonna show you some images of it but they're literally, you know, probably three inches wide. Real silvery looking. The, the, when you're looking at the head part of it, what really stands out is the large eyes. And they have scales all over the body except for the head. The head has kind of these bigger silvery plates on it. The eyes real big and the mouth. And the bottom jaw of the mouth uh, is real distinct because it comes out further than any part of the, the head. And when the mouth opens up, uh, I mean, it's wide. And so basically how they feed is they will eat their prey whole. So other fish, uh, crabs, when they're smaller, they can actually eat uh, insects. Um, and, uh, and, and actually I've, I, I've shown some video here before where we look at some of the larvae so there's a number of different species that have these clear eel-like looking larvae. Some are actually eels, but some are tarpon. Uh, some are ladyfish. Uh, so I'll show some of that video here. But I was gonna try to see if I could pick this thing up so you could kind of get an idea of how big it is. Their teeth uh, aren't like teeth that you would see on a shark or something like that. It's more of uh, like sandpaper. And so, you know, it can't really hurt you. Let's see if I can pick this sucker up. Oh my gosh. And okay, that's probably about as big as I can get is something like this of how big it is. But I'm gonna, maybe I'll get the video and see if you can look inside of here. You can see their gills, which is how they get oxygen uh, into their system. They're also known for gulping air. So uh, like if you're fishing for them down in Mexico or in Florida, Keys or something like that, You'll see them rolling over and you'll see them coming up and scooping air. And uh, they, they can actually gulp air uh, into their uh, system. What are some other cool things we got here? Um, oh, I guess one of the most important things is recreational fishing. So, uh, you know, people don't really eat the meat. The meat is not good. So most people, it's catch and release only. But uh, when they when uh, they catch them, they are known for well, obviously being big. So there's uh, a lot of tugging on it, but for jumping in the air, uh, notorious for jumping in the air. And so you'll see a lot of artwork, uh, actually in actual photos of people fishing, and these things are just jumping up in the air like crazy. So just uh, for sport fishing, uh, incredible fish. Here's just some of the scales I pulled up. You can see the size of them. These are just scattered all over the ground at the high tide line. The whole, whole bunch of them. Look, they got this, uh, you see the silvery part there? Kind of see that in the sun. Pretty wild. I actually have a funny story. Uh, I have a guy that I used to <laughs> work with. 
where I got all the sand off of these and uh, they eventually curl up so they'll dry up they'll curl up and I had them just laying on my desk and I probably had eight of them or so and he comes in uh, and sits down in front of my desk and he said oh chips he's all can I have some of those so he reaches down grabs it and tries to take a bite of them <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh but uh, you know that's only to do to your good buddies so anyway I'll probably take some of these home clean them up and uh, see if I can uh, trick somebody else into taking a bite of these. Yeah, they've got a big, uh, on their dorsal fin, this long spine that comes off of it. That's pretty common. That's a good way to tell uh, the species, as well as their anal fin here. Also has a spine that comes off of it and then the forked tail. So a real nice uh, forked tail swimming for swimming. They're, they're found, there's actually two species. So this one, uh, you know, we always have scientific names in the science world. Uh, this one is Megalops Atlanticus and it's because of where it lives and that is in the Atlantic. So from Virginia all the way down to Brazil, you can find these things. And of course, the Gulf of Mexico is included in that. There is another species that's in the Indo-Pacific, um, so, but they're two different, two different species. Some that you probably catch, they look familiar to, to this, but they're only like a foot in length. And they're, they're a lot of fun to catch too. It's the ladyfish. It basically looks like a baby tarpon. Um, but okay, I've told you enough about this. Uh, let's head on up. Uh, to the Heart Research Institute and talk to them about the tarpon research that they're doing right here in the Texas Coastal Bend. Okay, so we're off the beach now and we're at the Heart Research Institute. But instead of going inside like we normally do into the laboratories and stuff, we're actually going to get to go out in the field with the fisheries group at Sportfish Center and they're going to show us the type of sampling they're doing for tarpon up in these creeks around Aransas Pass, places where you would not think that these fish are living. And uh, so let's go check it out. Okay, so they're loading everything up and then we're gonna be heading out to the field to get some samples. My name is Isabel Tiller. I'm a master's student at Texas A&M Corpus Christi with the Sportfish Center. And uh, my master's project is looking at juvenile tarpon and snug habitat um, and general ecology. And right now we're tarpon sanding. Okay, tub. So right now we're at the Aransas Pass Aquatic Center, which is just a series of small ponds connected to a Redfish Bay, yeah, connected to Redfish Bay and then to the ocean. Um, and I mean, right now we're next to a railroad and there's baseball fields next to us. It's a pretty, not usual place that you think you would find this beautiful sport fish, but these are the environments that they're seeking um, in this juvenile life stage. So anywhere where there's maybe not so much flow or not so much salinity or not so much oxygen, uh, we don't have an exact answer for sure on what they're looking for, but what we do know is that they're trying to find a place that's safe and protected from predators. So. So after pulling this in, we record and measure everything to get like a general idea of what is in this community. Um, and then in combination with those habitat characteristics that we're describing, um, as well as pulling, we call it a prey sane, which uh, quantifies that the smaller fish that they could be eating, might be eating, but just generally understanding the entire ecological and biological community structure of where tarpon may or may not be. So. Even if we don't catch any tarpon ever at this site, we'll be able to compare it to sites where we are catching tarpon and get like a general understanding of the ecology. When we capture a tarpon, we first scan it for a pit tag to see if we have previously tagged it in the past. Um, if we haven't tagged it before, then we will get a new pit tag and we'll insert it using that syringe. Uh, we also measure standard length, fork length, and total length. Every time we capture them, no matter if it's an initial capture or a recapture, if they already have that pit tag, um, and then we take a fin clip for genetics. So it's kind of like clipping your fingernail. It causes no harm to the fish, and then that's how we can figure out uh, like where it's been and who it's related to and all the genetics part of it. So that's it. Awesome.
Now, how amazing is this project where they're actually trying to figure out where tarpon are growing up, uh, where they go uh, after they're, you know, juveniles and then turning into adults and being found right here uh, in Aransas Pass in these ditches that ultimately lead to Aransas Bay. That's pretty wild. And I, this is a two year project. So we'll see what they come up with uh, on the results. But turns out tarpon are pretty cool animals, huh? Okay, well, that's it for this episode of Beachcombing. I guess we'll catch you on the next one. Bye.